Well, I think the, one of the most effective ways to attack it is to just show people the matrix of false reality and reach out to police, military, bureaucrats and go, you know, your little cousin just died of cancer at 22. That's not normal. Here's some statistics. Do you know what's in the water? Do you know what's in the shots? Here, here's AP admitting they're giving everyone polio with the polio vaccine. And you're not going to listen now because you have defenses up. But deep down in your instincts, you know I'm telling you the truth, you're being manipulated. And I found that six months down the road, a year down the road, they then wake up. And just showing them how they're not in the power structure like they think they are, how they're being attacked as well. And what's interesting, too, is see, this new world order is to go through a series of changes, including the riot phase for 30-odd years as they bring down the food supply, and then the United Nations takes over the distribution of food to all the different regions, as they call these sections of the world. And they say in their own writings uh, in the United Nations that, that they'll gradually reduce these, this uh, ration to each area uh, every year, and it's up to you to bring your population down to accommodate and, and use the resources that are given to you. This is all their, their plan, and this is hell on earth they're bringing in step by step, and, of course, the reduction of population via mass, uh, literally, it, it, it's, um, we're being killed off by inoculations, and, and they know this. At this and that's all stated, and they all brag about it, yeah. and you'll tell some mom, and she'll arrogantly laugh at you, take her kid who already looks like a zombie, and, 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 just, and just shoot them up with some more, and then they'll look at you with pleasure. You crazy nut. It doesn't matter if you just quoted State Department Memorandum 200. Yes. It doesn't matter if you're quoting U.N. documents. It doesn't matter. They don't care. And then when their kid dies, they'll wear a little cancer ribbon and cry, yep. and it's like a celebrity thing. Oh, your kid died too. Ooh, ooh. You know, because it's all about euthanizing everybody. That's what this is all about. It, it is euthanasia. And it's a bacteria, bacteria warfare, it's viral warfare, it's bio warfare, carefully designed. Uh, and as I say, and all this stuff has been released recently from the internal meetings uh, at, at the World Health Organization. They admit that all of these particles of, of DNA and RNA and so on recombine within the body, infect the cells of the person and cause cancers down the road. They understand this. Well, they grow it in the exact type of monkeys and fetal tissue that have the cancer virus that's most that's most deadly in it. Well, actually, Uh, they've said now, they've stated now, that they're actually using, especially for this new swine flu, rather than use the eggs, chicken eggs, and so on for doing so, which also contains thousands of foreign viruses. They're using cancer virus instead of the dead baby retinas or the the green monkey kidneys uh, or the... Uh, uh, other growth mediums, you're right. They are using cancer virus. That's what they say, because the cancer virus is a survivor, so they're using that as an antidote. Isn't that sweet? Mm -hmm. I'm going to move to calls quickly now. Mark in Oregon, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex and Alan. Honored to speak with you, and thank you for your great information. Thank you for your great wisdom, even. Uh, Alex, on Monday's show, you had mentioned that there were 10 million doses of the flu mist being sent out into the country on Monday. They will have arrived or probably have arrived at their destination by now. I'm sure many of destinations that it's arriving to are the Walmart stores. Well, let me be clear. They said said last Friday that 200,000 were going to Tennessee, Indiana, and Texas, and that then by the end of the next week, 10 million more would start flowing. And then they admit there's been no testing of the H1N1, and that they're making people sign secrecy forms and waiving their rights when they take the nasal. Yes. You also reported, Alex, the Mayo Clinic has come out and said that the flu mist will be much more contagious to other people. It takes 10 to 20 days, as I understand it at this point, for the actual symptoms to manifest in someone who has received an injected or a flu mist vaccination. Now, I think the time clock has already uh, started on this and that the actual mass murder genocide that that this operation consists of, and it is not a drill, absolutely not a drill. It's set in motion now as to where it's going to follow through with the actual sickness itself, and people are going to become so sick and weak that they're going to accept martial law. And I think this is the first stage of the operation. Well, I know this. We're going to find out. 
by the end of October, early November, whether it's meant to mutate and really be deadly, or if this is just setting the precedent for us to go under World Health Organization rules and to set the precedent to take the shots as they've stated. We know it's at least that bad. Alan Watt, what do you think's going on? It's true. I think it fulfills both purposes. Uh, you become a human incubator when you take on this stuff. You are now the new egg, if you like. You're the new reactor it breeds within you. And they admit you shed the virus to all those around you. There's no doubt about that. And uh, uh, what's interesting to me is putting this kind of thing into a, a mist form. Uh, this supposed virus uh, would kill primarily by attacking the respiratory system, uh, the nasal passages and bronchial tubes in the lungs. So they're putting it right into the very areas. And they admit that the adjuvants are designed to attract leukocytes uh, and phagocytes to attack the stuff right into the lung area, which might cause you to die. With yeah, for those that don't the know, <laughs> that's the that's the autoimmune storm of, of, yeah. of how the 1918 killed tens of millions. It's the autoimmune response mm -hmm. to the virus that kills you in hours with, flu with, with fluid. Yep. And, and, and now we're getting reports, they're covering it up, that people are taking it and collapsing. And so, Alan, I want to be very clear about what you just said. They admit in the literature yeah. that it can cause... The autoimmune response, and you're right, you're injecting, you're injecting live virus into the nasal passages, into the lungs, which can then cause the autoimmune response, and Reuters is out ahead of it saying there's going to be lots of deaths but it's after you take the shot, but it's not the shot. Now, how obvious is that? Yeah, yes, it's, it's very obvious, and, and again, it's twofold, as you say, that it, it is to train us to take the annual shots and boosters for the rest of our lives. That's what they said at the World Health Organization 2006 meeting. All right. I hope you're wrong, Mark, but we at least know they're setting the precedent for the big soft kill that's coming. But we're going to find out the next few months here, buddy. It, it doesn't look good. I'll say that. I mean, they admit it's live virus they're putting into 10 million morons. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to John in Arkansas. John, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. This is John. I spoke to you about the police um, stopping me and trying to get me to take the shot. Yeah, uh, tell us tell us about that again, because uh, t t t expand on that. Yes, um, I was on my way home um, from a girlfriend's house, and a police officer here in Little Rock stopped me. He was like, hey, how you doing? He's like, oh, it's a little late to be out. And I was like, yeah, it's okay. I'm just coming from my girlfriend's house. Oh, it's a free and country. You know, the guy's got to ask you why you're out at night. You know, you're a slave. Go ahead. And he was like, so have you um, taken your, um, gotten your flu shot yet? I said, no. And he said, why not? I said, because that's government propaganda and it contains mercury, which kills you. And he looked at me kind of crazy. He said, so you're, you're going to probably spout out some New World Order crap, huh? I said, yeah, I was kind of thinking that and kind of telling you to fuck off right about now. All right, I'm going to let you go, sir. I, I understand that happened to you, but we really need to remember we have a lot of children listening. Okay, buddy? Uh... No, no more for uh, that caller. Let's talk to Mike in Texas. Mike, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Can you hear me all right? Yes, go ahead. Um, I've just been – this This is in regards to, I guess, more of the eugenic kind of stuff that you guys are talking about. Um, I studied uh, Soviet yeah. Union uh, history and politics when I was in uh, university, and we covered the Aral Sea. Um a lot of the uh, genetic mutations and uh, aberrations that uh, resulted from the uh, pesticides and other stuff that was running off through the irrigation ditches of the farmers. Um, <clears throat> I'm just curious to know if a lot of the similar stuff is being put into this kind of GMO foods and uh, fast food and other stuff. Incredibly good point. Let, let me briefly say that they've done studies where over 90% I want to say 97, but you can pull it up, of people in India, of the sewage systems have the SV40 live cancer virus. They don't just inject this in people. It then spreads and mutates in us as incubators, as Alan was saying. Now, I've interviewed genetic engineer after genetic engineer, guys making millions a year, guys who were running whole facilities, and they would find that they would be told by other engineers they were just running plants to make the potato this way, the tomato that way, insert this gene, and they noticed, we've had them on the show over and over again, that it was a combination change that would change other things and produce a pharmacological crop, that's what it's called, pharmacological crops, 
that would also sterilize all the guinea pigs and rats they tested it on. And so, yes, and that's what they've said. They're going to have food crops already have them with vaccines in them, with live viruses in them, and that and that the very GMO, it, it's already going on. Alan Watt. Yes, I also have the information. It's up on websites in fact, the United Nations that they were into crops uh, for the last 15 years for third world countries, especially all kinds of stuff, including corn, that would have uh, would actually help sterilize the people and bring down the population rate. You find Rockefeller himself uh, is in charge of the rice campaign, I think they call it the Golden Rice Campaign, as to doing on the modified rice too. Uh, 